So these are the supplements that actually work for improving your muscular gains, performance, and health as of 2025. I have 10 of them that are backed by research, so let's not waste any time here. Supplement number one is obviously going to be creatine monohydrate. So this one has more research behind it than my mother has opinions about my life choices. So the International Society of Sports Nutrition actually called this the most effective nutritional supplement currently available to athletes for increasing exercise capacity and lean body mass. And all those scary rumors about creatine, completely debunked. It does not cause hair loss. Your genetics are doing that just fine on their own. It doesn't harm your kidneys, won't dehydrate you, and does not cause muscle cramps. I take five grams daily, even on days when my only exercise is walking to the refrigerator. But also creatine isn't just for your muscles, your brain actually stores around 5% of it. So during stress or sleep deprivation, brain creatine levels can drop. So a meta-analysis of around 10 studies showed creatine supplementation improved with memory performance compared to placebo with particularly strong effects in older adults. And that is just another reason I'm sticking with my five grams daily. Supplement number two is going to be omega-3s. So I take omega-3 for two compelling reasons, which is brain health and heart health. So people with low homocysteine levels, which is a chemical linked to Alzheimer's disease, who took omega-3 supplements experienced a 7.1% improvement in brain performance and a 22.3% reduction in dementia symptoms. And that is enough to remember where you parked at the mall without wandering aimlessly for 20 minutes. For fart, for fart health, for heart health, not fart health, the vital trial with over 25,000 people showed a surprising 28% reduction in heart attack risk as well. The Mayo Clinic also did some studies across multiple trials, confirming a 13% reduction with high-grade certainty as well, which is basically just cautious medical speak and basically saying the shotting from the rooftops. Again, with this one, be careful with, do with dosage though. So too much omega-3 can increase the risk of atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat and also thin your blood a little bit too much. So I personally just take one to one and a half grams daily as a mixture of EPA and DHA, which are the omega-3 fatty acids. Supplement number three are going to be collagen peptides. So truthfully, this is one that I used to think was not legit. Now I have changed my mind on this, and this is mainly for the vanity section of the video. So collagen peptides has shown an 8% reduction in skin wrinkles across multiple clinical trials, and no, regular protein supplements do not provide the same benefit, which is what blew my mind and made me change my mind here. So a 2020 study with burn patients showed significantly better healing with collagen peptides compared to protein. I take 10 to 15 grams of collagen peptides, usually when I remember, you know, maybe a few times a week. My wife, Abby, has it on auto ship, so she takes it all the time. She looks pretty good. You know, looking younger won't extend your life, but it might make the warranty look a little bit better. Plus, it's nice to have people guess your age and be off by a decade, you know, in the right direction, of course. Supplement number four is going to be TMG, and this also goes by betaine. So this supplement works by accelerating ATP recycling and enhancing muscle protein building. It's called TMG, and there's some controversy here, like pineapple on pizza, but more scientific. So a 2017 analysis found that only two of seven studies showed improvements in muscular and strength and power in the people taking TMG. But the key insight here is that TMG works when combined with exercise, not when you're just contemplating exercise sitting on your couch. In randomized controlled trials, people taking TMG saw greater strength improvements than those taking placebo, and everyone was exercising in this one. A 2021 study with professional soccer players showed that TMG improved your one rep max, VO2 max, and sprinting performance after several months. And it also increased testosterone levels, in effect replicated in another 2022 study, but boosted them a little bit, nothing too much and too crazy, so don't take TMG thinking it's a test booster. But wait, there is more. TMG may also improve brain performance by lowering homocysteine levels, which again are linked to Alzheimer's disease. So I try to take around 500 milligrams daily with my pre-workout, but though remember, my supplement choices aren't your medical advice. It's more of like a scientific show and tell kind of here. Supplement number five is going to be hyaluronic acid. So this kind of goes with collagen peptides and continues our anti-aging campaign. And studies show that hyaluronic acid can improve skin wrinkles by nearly 19%. That's almost as effective as good lighting in your selfies, but it lasts longer. I take around 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid daily and combined with the collagen, they're like the dynamic duo of skin health. Not quite Batman and Robin, but they get the job done without any capes. Supplement number six, low dose melatonin. So for sleep, melatonin is excellent evidence for improving sleep quality and reducing the time to fall asleep. It's like a lullaby in a pill form, but with some more scientific backing. Timing and dosage for this one are crucial though. Our bodies produce around 80 micrograms of melatonin per hour during sleep, which is around 640 micrograms for an eight hour period. 
so many supplements exceed this amount. It's like literally bringing a fire hose to water a house plant. You know, they have like five to 10 times the recommended dosage. So personally, I take 300 micrograms about two hours before bedtime when I feel like I need the boost for sleep, if I'm particularly wound up or jet lag and those kind of things. Melatonin also has some anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects too, which is a nice bonus for aging bodies already fighting the good fight against gravity and metabolism slowdown. Supplement number seven, of course, is going to be protein powder. So there's a striking correlation between decreased muscle strength and increased mortality rates. It's like your muscles are playing a very serious game of use it or lose, or use it or lose it with your lifespan. So how much protein do you need? So a 2018 analysis of 49 studies found that 1.6 grams per kilogram of lean body weight maximizes muscle building response. So if someone is around 180 pounds or 80 kilos, that's around 130 grams daily, you know, roughly a pound of beef, which obviously is going to be a lot of chewing. Protein powders make reaching this target easier without developing the jaw strength of a hyena. So look for options without added sugar, added salt. If you're plant-based, you might need more total protein to get enough leucine, which actually kickstarts the muscle protein synthesis response. And despite what social media experts claim while trying to sell you questionable mushroom supplements, soy protein doesn't affect testosterone or estrogen levels in men. Science got you here. Supplement number eight is the multivitamin and mineral complex. And this is another one I've changed my mind on, you know, over the years. So for cognitive performance, the massive Cosmos Mind study with over 2,000 people showed significant benefits in global cognition from a basic multivitamin and mineral supplement over three years. And this isn't a replacement for eating your vegetables. Your mother and I agree on that point, but it can't help cover your bases, and usually they're pretty dirt cheap. Supplement number nine is going to be psyllium husk. So for heart health, I also take psyllium husk, which feeds gut bacteria, improves your insulin sensitivity, blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol. The general recommendation for this is around three to five grams daily. It also keeps you fuller for longer, which helps when you're staring longingly at the second piece of cake with the emotional intensity of a Victorian novel character. So number number 10 is going to be magnesium glycinate. I'd be remiss not to mention magnesium glycinate, possibly the most underrated supplement in the modern world. So magnesium is involved in over 300 reactions in the body, yet an estimated 50% of adults just don't get enough of it. Magnesium glycinate is particularly well absorbed and doesn't cause the digestive disruption that can happen with other forms like citrate. You know, you do not want to be running to the bathroom after taking your supplement here. Studies show it can improve sleep quality, reduce muscle cramps, help manage stress, and also support healthy blood pressure. It's like the reliable friend who doesn't post on social media, but somehow keeps everything running smoothly behind the scenes. I take around 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium glycinate before bed, which helps with relaxation and sleep. It's also synergistic with vitamin D absorption, making it particularly valuable during winter months when we're all as sudden deprived as cave dwelling creatures. And there's also two other supplements that I want to throw in here that are some bonus considerations. Um, they are glycine and NAC. So from age 40 or so and beyond, our glutathione levels, which is one of the most powerful antioxidants in the body, start declining faster than my patients for reality TV. A small 2022 study showed older adults taking glycine and NAC had significant improvements in mitochondrial health, which mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell, hopefully you remember that one from sixth grade biology. I take NAC on and off, mostly for rumination and overthinking, but if I had to pick just one supplement on the list, it would unquestionably be creatine for all the reasons I explained above and a reason I put it as number one. And remember, just because I take these supplements does not mean that you should. I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor, so talk to your doctor before adding supplements to your own regimen. And when you hear phrases like, may and possibly and more research required that's not me just being uncertain that's how responsible science communication works so hopefully you enjoyed this video let me know which supplements you take and find most helpful and i will catch you in the next one